around my story. Let me be honest with you guys. I'm not a fan of first dates. I've only had a couple of good first dates. Others are plain disasters. However, from time to time, I like to get on Tinder and swipe between pictures. Tinder dates always turn into funny stories. Sometimes even spooky ones. My guy best friend Ryan and I decided to go on a few Tinder dates just for the fun of it. Before we went out, we would always agree on a safe word. And that word was hot dog. A text saying, hey, can you pick up some hot dogs on the way? Or something along those lines basically meant, can you call me and pretend there's an emergency so I can get out of this situation without being rude? We had a lot of safe words meaning different things and had an unspoken rule that every time we were on a date, we would let the other person know. I met this guy called Brandon on the application. We had a few good chats and decided to go out for brunch. I called Ryan and I let him know that I'll be having brunch with this Brandon guy. I'm not a supermodel, but I'm a bit too picky when it comes to first date outfits. I dived into my closet and decided to wear a bright pink off-shoulders blouse and a tiny little white skirt. And of course, my signature mermaid hue high heels. Brandon texted me saying he knows of a nice Italian restaurant. Despite the fact that we were going out for brunch, I somehow agreed to Italian. The guy comes to pick me up for our brunch date. He looks nice with lots of black on. He says he needs to make a stop along the way. I couldn't really seem to disagree. I mean, he clearly forgot to buy me flowers. So I say it's fine and he can make a stop along the way. He pulls up to a gravesite and I see people and I'm like, okay, maybe he's picking something up from someone or maybe he works here and needs to do something. What was really going through my mind though is what the heck is he doing and why is he bringing me to a gravesite on a first date? I just waited in the car, especially since there's morning people nearby and I'm wearing a bright pink outfit. He gets out of the car and opens up the passenger side door. I tell him something along the lines of, I don't want to draw attention to myself and I'll just wait here. And he says something along the lines of, don't worry, you look great. They will love you. Despite my pink outfit and my high heels, Brandon was very well built. He was very tall and had broad shoulders. One could easily tell that he is into martial arts. So I wasn't very worried about my safety. However, I was really worried about his mental health. I'm not even kidding. I was so very curious about what on earth we're redoing there at 10 a.m. on a first date. And who is they? As in, they love you. Okay, so the next part is a bit hard to define whether it was creepy, surreal, or a prank show. It was his mother's funeral. I stood next to a group of weeping people watching as my date's mother was lowered into the ground. Needless to say, it was really, really awkward, especially since he kept trying to hold my hand and nuzzle me for comfort. It's a first date for God's sake. I waited for the service to be over, as I didn't want to be rude to the grieving people or to the dead woman. And then I texted Ryan, hot dog. So Ryan called me and pretended to be my landlord and told me that my apartment was flooded. I quickly apologized to Brandon and called an Uber. While I was waiting for my Uber to arrive, Brandon kept on holding my hand and literally begging me to stay a little bit longer. He also said we could still go out for brunch but I politely said we could reschedule for another time. I think his cousins or something were standing too close. He told them that we've been dating for a few weeks and they should talk me into staying. 
I was so glad that my Uber finally arrived. I hopped inside the car like a freaking ninja. I called Brian and asked him to come over. We stayed together and honestly, I've never laughed as much as Ryan made me laugh that night. And guess what? Ryan and I realized we were actually in love a few weeks later. We gave up online dating and we've been together ever since. It all happened on my last holiday. It was a terrible experience. It was the worst holiday I have ever had. Me and my friend Renee, we decided to go to New Zealand. We were saving money for a very long time to go on this trip. It was our dream to go to the land of the Lord of the Rings. We had made reservations for flight at the end of July. And from that moment on, everything went wrong. It turned out that the flight was reserved for only one person. Simply because a woman at the travel agency didn't understand us very well. I managed to reserve a flight, but a different one, so we couldn't go together. But I thought that it was not a big deal. My friend flew a few hours after me, I was going first. When I arrived at the airport, I was very happy because that meant that my holiday has just started and that nothing else could happen. And I was mistaken. When the hour of my flight was coming, I queued up to the custom clearance. My passport was right and the next thing I had to do was to go through the metal detector. When I was passing through, it started to beep. I was so scared. I was taken aside immediately. And I felt like a thief. It was terrible. The custom officer had taken me to another room and she told me to undress. I tried to explain that I had a belly ring and maybe it was the cause of the beeping but she didn't want to listen. I had to undress. They took my clothes somewhere else and I was standing alone in the middle of the room. I was shocked and stressed. The woman came back after about 5 minutes which seemed to be ages for me. She gave me back my clothes but I was not allowed to put them on. She checked me one more time with a small metal detector which was obviously beeping in front of my belly ring. Of course the custom officials went through all of my things but they didn't find anything. I was late for my flight so I had to wait for another one. My friend was supposed to meet me at the airport and it was me who should be waiting for her. She was terrified that I was not there but fortunately she decided to wait. After that horrible flight, we met at the airport and we went to our hostel. It turned out that we expected something different, but it was not that bad, and we were too tired to look for something else. New Zealand is the most beautiful country I have ever seen, and we loved everything about it. The people, their customs, their food, basically everything, and the entire environment. We spent three weeks there. We had a really good time. But when the time ended, we had to fly.